Thank God it's Friday. It's Friday, Friday. Mm-hmm. We're going to down on Friday. Give everybody a second to get here. Um, in fact, while they're getting here, <laughs> we should probably, I know Ben doesn't care anything about it. I, I might want to get one of those intro videos. Where you have you start it, and you know what I forgot to do was to post on Facebook that we're streaming. I can do that. Dang, right I now. forgot that too. I can do it while we're waiting on people. All right, yeah, might as well. Um, Can't hurt too much. Let me see. Let me make sure it's not on the stream. Well, just to open up a new tag, then drag it to that screen. Yeah, I am. I was just thinking about it. And oh. then what else do I have to do? Um. I think I already have the window open here to copy the link. Okay, anyway, hello, people. Speak now if you're here. Forever hold your peace. Hold your chest piece. <laughs> yeah, chest pieces. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, let me just minimize that for a second. Yeah, you're talking. <laughs> Jive talking, but talking nonetheless. <laughs> yeah. All right, sit for a second. Hey, it's GM Benjamin Feingold. Hey, GM Benjamin Feingold. Hey, and Bishop, Bishop Takes. Takes. How's it Yo, going? Mr. Bishop Takes. Okay, I'm just making a little Facebook post while we're waiting on people to get here. How's it going, Lukey Pookie? I do think that I want to post it. Uh, Ron said he gets on the stream a lot. He just never says anything. So I think people would get on. I believe it. Go, Ron. Okay. Nice. Let's put it here. Do it. Nailed it. <laughs> How's it going, Axel? Hey, Axel. How's it going? Yeah, we're going to play in just a minute. Yeah, well, you could be the first to challenge Karen. Try Exclam Challenge. Mm -hmm. Exclam Challenge. Or you challenge. can make your own challenge on uh, chess.com. It's sending her a three-minute or five-minute rated or unrated challenge. Just no increment. Make sure you get rid of that increment. True. I don't know if I want to put it on Twitter. I guess I could. Hey, Justin. Oh, hey, Justin, how's it going? And Blizz, Ben, you giving tips to or learning? Can he do both? Can he <laughs> give tips and learn? Yeah, he, he gets on the stream sometimes and, give, and gives a little lesson, too. Let me just make this little... Let me put stream Hey, it's Scottish right Demon now. Goat. Hey, goats. I'm just posting on Twitter for a second. All right, let me see. There we go. Oh, no, it didn't work. There it is. Your tweet was sent. It was. To the tweet verse. <laughs> where All people right. tweet. The Facebook one, I think, is more... I don't. I haven't even been Twitter, on Twitter that long, so I don't have a lot of followers. Mm -hmm. um, hey, Callie. Hey, Callie Gambler. Hey, Kangaroo. Whereas on Facebook, I have a million... I mean, not a million, but I have like a lot of friends that are chess people. Karen prefers three-minute or five-minute. Mm -hmm. Three or five, uh, rated uh, or unrated. Rated or unrated, just no increment. How's it going, Fresh Nims? I thought it said Fresh Nims. <laughs> it's hard to tell with the neon. Yeah. Oh, yeah, let me open this back up so that we can make sure we're looking normal. <laughs> looking as normal as I ever do. <laughs> Same as it ever was. Yeah, I don't really care for increment. I like either just three or five. Mm -hmm. Um. I saw the goat pop up, but then it went away. He got a little shy. I don't know. <laughs> shy goat. Yeah, shy Billy goat. <laughs> Man. <laughs> and he got a little sheepish. <laughs> oh, kangaroo. It's student v. student now. Uh-huh. I just taught kangaroo today, so... All right. It's going to be ready for either winning hard or losing hard. Mm -hmm. Ready for me. You win by the sword and you die by the sword. That's mm. what I say. A little bit of Queen's Gambit declined action mm -hmm. going on. Stealing all my jokes, says GM Benjamin Feingold, even though he so brazenly steals my Lance Armstrong jokes. I was making fun of Lance Armstrong forever. Admit it. 
Yeah, you, you <laughs> turned on the stream the other night. Yeah, yeah, well, he's been always making fun of Lance Armstrong the last few streams. Yeah. Now, what am I supposed to do here? Which is better? I was just trying to remember what you said to do instead of what I always do. <laughs> Karen watched Queen's Gambit last night preparing for this game. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Paul Drinkwater asks, how was karaoke? Um, I enjoyed it, and Ben went. That was nice. That's pretty and, cool. And, um, yeah. A little karaoke night? Was it crowded? No. Well, there were some people there. But not too crowded. I'll oh, we'll just do this. I don't ever know what to do in this dumb opening. Um, it was pretty crowded, and the smoke was bad. It was getting to me, but I enjoyed the singing. Ben was there. That was fun. I got to talk briefly to Stephen and Chet, but they had to leave. Spencer, you need more cloths. You wear this shirt twice a week. Let me see. That's not true. I haven't worn the shirt in a while, but actually. I, ha I have not noticed that that's true, but... Um, I mean, I have about maybe 12 to 15 shirts that I wear. So I should wear them once every two weeks or so. Mm -hmm. And I certainly haven't worn this very recently, as far as I can remember. Yeah. But I'm, I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Mm -hmm. Hey, Allison T.O. This is the Tartic Hour, although it's not really proper Tartic Hour, but mostly Tartic Hour. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah. I was just kind of, you know. Usually H6 has been thrown in earlier, but, well, it's not much different. Mm -hmm. Bishop's all backed up over here. Um, I learned to insult... Mr. Shabba. I didn't understand that either. But I didn't watch Queen's Gambit. Can you do doping in chess? Yeah, I feel like if you, you know, do a doobie and then play some chess, that would maybe not help your chess, but it's technically doping. Right? Wait, what are they <laughs> asking? Can you do doping in chess? I mean, I assume there's some kind of... According to the uh, the FIDE rules, even taking beta blockers is against um, their protocol. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's, it seems it's like somebody got in trouble for that. Performance enhancing. Or something, but there was had to do with being sick or something. Mr. Scheibel is the janitor. Okay, I didn't remember that. Mm -hmm. um, we still haven't finished it. Yeah, Adderall, Allison TL, I've heard that Adderall makes people you know, very motivated and productive. I just hate my position because like everything. He's normal position. Well, it feels like threatening. Two bishops. All right, let me go over here. What else? A lot of times you have a great position and you're like, I hate this position. <laughs> well, and then I feel like that my bishop, I couldn't figure out what to do with it. Now he's just moving around the white square bishop. Yeah, that's how it is. Just an easy normal position. Uh, Isn't Adderall like ADHD medication? I don't know. Allison, Allison. I don't really know much about Adderall. I think it is. Cloths. I thought that you were trying to be all fancy. <laughs> <laughs> and use some kind of slang for right, shirts. Right. So, right. like threads. Yeah, and <laughs> so for that reason, um, I yeah, like threads. Mm -hmm. uh, What's the bishop's guy's name again? Dmitry Komarov. I think there's a, it's K-H-O-M, et cetera. Komarov. All you need to know is there's an H in there. Oh, shit. Dang it. God damn it. Didn't even see that. I forgot about Dre. All right. Kangaroo. You're doing all right till that 
moment. Yeah, there. I should resign. I'll, I'll play on a little bit longer. Come on, I saw Kangaroo was up a rook in a an end game where he had just a rook, and then you were winning later. <laughs> you had no pieces. I know. <laughs> it could so you happen. You could still win this. It could happen. Mm-hmm. Hey, Cali Campbell, can I ask a language stream, question? Stream like stream. I don't think people do that. Hikaru, no. Well, Hikaru obviously is you know a speech impediment or something. I haven't noticed that he says that word in a Shreem. funny way. Shreem, <laughs> yeah. I haven't noticed he that. He says a lot of words in a funny way, but yeah, yeah I didn't notice I mean, I'm stream. not saying he does or doesn't, I'm just having it. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I don't know about Shreem. <laughs> Shreem. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think I say it the right way, stream. <laughs> that does sound correct to me, to my ear. Make sure I get all of the blend sounds articulated. Almost making luft. Pretty good. Oh, yeah. Darn. It almost makes luft, God though. <laughs> Shouldn't lift to the other pawn. I always do that, too. <laughs> I've got just my habit moves. My habit moves. That Hikaru can ban all of us if he wants to. That's probably true. He could ban us all from his channel. That would be the worst day of my life. Well, except for one thing. <laughs> <laughs> um... Here comes the counterplay. Go, Karen. You got it. I wish I hadn't made that dumb pawn out. Let's see what I can do about the situation. <laughs> Here's the situation. You got it, Karen. Um, I need to do it. My bishop might come there. I want to go back. <clears throat> tough. That's very tough. Tough but fair. Mm-hmm. Good game. <laughs> Your defense was actually pretty good, but uh, I thought yeah. you'd step to h7 there. But, um, I mean, it's lost in any case. But mm -hmm. Obviously, he didn't have a lot of time, so somehow he could have won. You're yelling at the screen. I mean, it's too late for yelling. <laughs> After I lost the rook, you know, it's kind of hard to come back from that. <laughs> is that Ben Jr.? No, there is no such... Person named Almost, ben, though. ben Jr., but you're, yeah. On the right track. <laughs> so if you want to play the Tartakauer, the first thing you can do, you should always do this. There it is. And then he'll go here. Then you can castle. Then here. So now here's your choice of what variation in the Queen's Gambit declined main line to play. Mm -hmm. uh, B6 is what you might play. This is the Tartakauer. This is the proper Tartakauer move order okay. right here. It doesn't hurt to get an h6, and it doesn't hurt to castle, of course. Now, I don't know what the huge problem is playing b6 early. Probably nothing, right? Probably. Maybe he could take or something at some point. Then it was more precise. Yeah. I would probably at this point play knight takes, because I don't want to block my bishop. Like, when your bishop's here, you don't want a pawn there. Yeah. Normally, you'd play pawn takes if your bishop needs to get out this on this diagonal. Yeah, I thought that. I just wasn't sure. But if your bishop's on this diagonal, you want that diagonal. You know, you don't want your bishop blocked by a pawn. That's true. Gigi's kangaroo, by the way. Hey, Squire. Please explain the value of h6 when he just plays bh4 anyway. All right, good question. If you're going to play with b6, like a Tartakauer, um, it's... Important to keep your knight here guarding the white squares 
for technical reasons. Basically, the idea is that white will take and play queen a4 and bishop a6 if your knight is not here. And they'll target your white squares on the queen side. As in the famous game Bernstein Capablanca, where Capablanca pulled that combo at the end uh, to because his back rank was weak. Mm. In the opening, Capablanca played inaccurately and did play an early knight d7 and then followed up with b6. So his white squares were weak when Bernstein did play this way. He did play takes queen a4, bishop a6, and proved an advantage for white. Now, what does that have to do with h6? Well, your h7 pawn will be weak if your knight is not here to protect this knight or to go to f8 to protect the h pawn. So when white plays these moves, which white will inevitably play, your h pawn will be hanging. So playing h6 saves your h pawn, which would be weak because you have to keep your knight here to guard oh, the white see. squares. Also, it makes lift with the with the tempo, so it doesn't really hurt to make lift. Um, you know, in the long term, it doesn't really hurt. It improves the position slightly anyway. So that's why strong players, even if they play the Tartakawa or not, will play h6. Mm -hmm. I see, because like if if you take on f6 with the bishop. Yeah, then exactly. The pawn on d5 is weak. Is that what the situation? No, we're talking about how oh. this pawn is weak. So he wants to know why we're playing h6. Oh, oh, so if oh, you take right. on f6, then the oh. h pawn will be hanging. I see, but they don't. Oh, if they move the bishop and the queen. Oh, I see. Which now. they do, almost always. Yeah, yeah. like okay. he did. Yeah. Yeah, I almost never play b6, even though I know you told me that was one of the moves. Thank you, Market Sands, yeah. for that 100 centidues. How's it going, Nerd? I learned from that too. Spencer hey, Perrier. <laughs> <laughs> I am drinking Perrier, so make, that's fair. Make love to not war. Mm-hmm. Okay, I see what you're saying now. Yeah, h6 is always useful in this uh, in, in this queen's gambit decline, just not in the exchange variation. I mentioned that to you. Like, if they play the exchange variation, you don't want to play h6. But if they don't exchange, then you can and should play h6 here. Oh, okay. I remember that. But, but this was all normal. This mouse is, like, so sensitive. It's like super fast mouse. Mm -hmm. It's like Speedy Gonzalez. I like the mouse a lot, yeah. It's just really easy to use. So you played c5. That's the more aggressive way to handle the position. Basically, you could play c6 or c5 in the structure. Mm -hmm. Why not both bishop takes? I think that's what right. about. Luft and war. Um, he says make luft, not war. And then he said, why not both? Oh, okay. That's oh, is, okay. About. I thought he was something else. And in fact, this structure we saw in the game that Short had with black against, I believe it was Timon from mm -hmm. yesterday, the book, or two days ago, the book that we read. Uh, he had the structure, and then Timon went for this break, and then he played c5, if you guys who are there remember that. Um, so this is a, a normal structure. It, it's, you know, not great for black because the structure is bad. This mm -hmm. is a, a backwards pawn. Generally, black has to have the structure only because white would take here, which white didn't have to, white didn't do that. You know, and so a lot of times when you see the structure, for example, it'll be like this, white will take here, so that after this takes, you can't play knight takes. It's impossible because you took your knight. So now you'll have the structure that you had with c6, but at least you have the bishop pair as compensation. Mm -hmm. The way the game went, however, your opponent took, and so you should play knight takes, but you played pawn takes, so now you have this bad structure, and you didn't get the bishop pair. He didn't have to take because you didn't play knight takes. Okay, yeah, I see. So now you're a little bit worse, and c6 would just be sort of a solid worse. Now this is a little bit more aggressive. Probably he should take as soon as possible or, or whenever. You know, he should take at some point. Um, instead he played this move, which I'm not a huge fan of. Bishop c2 is shocking. I mean, of course bishop b1, right? I don't know, maybe. So it doesn't block the rook? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's the whole point of rook c1. You can play bishop b1. Yeah. Okay. It's interesting. I mean, this was very risky, don't you think? You lining up right with the rook <laughs> like that? Uh, I didn't notice it. Yeah, that's too. That's not no, acceptable. That's scary really. now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But okay, if you want to stop this knight move, which you did, you could play rook c eight. Is that a gap? Queen d six. 
Who's the guy? Me? No. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. With the beard, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you want to stop uh, the knight from coming in, rook c8 or queen d6, both are reasonable moves. But yeah, queen c7, this, that's not great. Your queen yeah. was in trouble here the whole time. Mm -hmm. Now here he attacked your pawn and you sort of ignored it. It seems like you just counterattacked. Oh, okay. I just didn't see it. Well, his last move was here, so you got to ask yourself, why did my opponent play the move? Mm -hmm. And it's and also you should understand I, this is weak. Yeah. In the structure, you have a so. weak backwards pawn. I was looking at um, the fact that the bishop was bearing down on um, h7, so I just was I just didn't notice the pawn. I thought the queen was going to move it on over. Yeah, but you have that defended anyway. And also, your move doesn't do anything about this. Oh, no. Your move's not but related. I mean, I'm just to, oh, that's why you thought he to, played there. Yeah, I got so you. I was just kind of eyeing you. that, and I didn't notice the pawn. Yeah. But, yeah, you should because in this structure the pawn is weak because you don't have a C pawn mm -hmm. or E pawn. I thought about backwards. it at the time that I moved the pawn. I did. Mm -hmm. I just forgot. There's a lot you have to keep in consideration. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Pre-move says pawn drink water. Is, I already said, is that a guy? I always... <laughs> You feel cool when you play um, bishop c1? I hmm. wonder what he meant by that. Bishop b1, maybe. Yeah. Hey, this is Spencer. Hey, Lords of Acid. Another thing is that your pawn is loose because it's attacked and defended the same number of times. Mm. It's attacked and defended once. That's a loose pawn. And this is loose as well. Although it's not really, I guess. But Yeah, obviously he's trying to attack your center construction here. And you're probably not losing material if you take with the queen here on, uh, like this, instead of hanging the rook. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Although he would do this. So he did win a pawn because of this move. And uh, you can't win it back. I was thinking you could try this, but he can defend both pawns. So that's not going to work. You probably just play the position, like go here, be a pawn down, but he has split pawns. Mm -hmm. So you're not lost, but you're close, I guess. A loosey goosey pawn. Yeah. Oh, you bent B1, Scottish Demon Go. Hey, John John. <laughs> I am nice, John John. <laughs> hey, Jitterbug Flapping. Yeah. yeah. I did mean I couldn't recover from that. Well, yeah, he didn't have a lot of time, so theoretically you could have won. This was a great move because after check, you can go here, and your queen defends mate. Yeah. But you didn't. You went up. I was like, oh, man, that's a brilliant defense. And then, But then you played here. I was like, what? And then, yeah, now you're going to lose the queen in the game. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, no, I mean, I would still expect down a rook, like, around here, he had such little time, I would expect myself to win. To try, okay. And I need to, yeah. to, to try to win on time more than I do, obviously. Yeah, because <laughs> I would have been lost but posed more problems, and he would have lost on time. Yeah. <laughs> I assume. Well, maybe not, but. Maybe he would have like tried really hard because it's me, you know. It's like yeah. I gotta beat Spencer when I can. <laughs> You're welcome, Jitterbug Flapping. Good game. Wow, well, you got a ton of uh, challenges. Oh, this is about where you lost your voice from yelling. <laughs> <laughs> but F four, yeah, that's problem. I mean, okay, every move wins for White, so we don't have to find a refutation. But yeah, I, I can see what you're saying there. F four would have been smart to kick. Mm -hmm. Away from H8. Oh, there he is. Yeah, I've been a little nauseous today, too, because of the headache. I had a bad headache this morning. I took four Advil, and it did finally go away. That's good. Drugs are great, I've always said. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, uh, Karen informed me that she did not have a lot of beer last night. Only no. a couple beers. No, I had two um, intentionally because I'm on this tiny bit of a diet. And, you know, beers have a lot of calories in them. So you got to give up something. It's like Lent. 
so I did. <laughs> I get full anyway from beer. I enjoy a good beer, but I don't you know, usually need to drink a lot of them anyway. I heart beer too much. <laughs> I heart too much beer. Words of acid. It's like yeah. sort of a dyslexic moment for me there. Um, yeah, I mean, I like alcohol, but beer is one of my less favorite options. But I'll still have, uh, you know, a Stella. Stella! Mm -hmm. But yeah, I'm not really much of a beer drinker. Beer is overrated, says Market Sands. Yeah, we're on uh, we're on the same page there. Don't really drink, says Jitterbug. Come on, start drinking. The Beth girl taught me to drink early and often. Favorite alcoholic beverage? Hmm. It's tough. I mean, I usually get uh, whiskey at, at the bar. I also like tequila. The whiskey? I'm the one that told, told mm -hmm. you about the whiskey. That's true. You got me on that whiskey train. Yeah, but It's because I, I kept having those beers, and then I was like, I don't really like beer that much. And then you suggested some whiskey, and I was like, that's a good mm, suggestion. Whiskey sours. Those are really good drinks. Mm -hmm. I don't drink them anymore, but um, I think they're good. Beer drinking, breath stinking, sniffing glue. Classic Beastie Boys. Mm, yeah, I don't really, you know, I don't like wine. I guess I'm just not a, I'm just kind of picky. I like wine. I can drink, it's got to be sweet, but then not too sweet. And I don't like any hint of like that vinegar that you can get sometimes. I'm just, I'm not a, I don't like it that much, I guess. <laughs> got all these conditions. I don't know. Give me these options. You're about to lose on time. Um, Move your queen. There it is. A legal move. I didn't like all my options. It's okay. Here, let's go for a minute. Then... Before you say you don't like beer, at least try Grim Virgin Double Ambry first. <laughs> do I have to do that? I can't even remember all that. <laughs> you know? No, I've had some beers that I really liked. It's just not my favorite kind of alcohol. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm picky about the beer, too. I'll just remember Grim Virgin. I can't remember all that stuff. Double Ambry? I, write it down. Uh, it's just a lot of steps just to order a drink. Come on. <laughs> I'm so lazy. I shouldn't have gone here now. I have left. There's plenty of good alcohol on the sweet side. Hmm, I'll believe that. Pedro Jimenez. Is that how you pronounce Jimenez? X-Men is? <laughs> X-Men is? Yesterday, Ben's stream was great. Not only playing seriously, but also with Increment. Yeah, we all know how you love Increment, Nur. <laughs> Spencer, you are allowed to have a bigger cup. That one is tiny. Thanks, Paul Drinkwater. I'm drinking water out of it, so if anybody can tell me to have a bigger cup for water, it should be you. Mm, I didn't even notice I was so low on time. Darn. That's terrible. I mean, the game was boring. You just lost on time. <coughs> you know, mm. it's just nothing happened until you lost on time, pretty much. You know? Mm -hmm. But we can still look at it a little bit, if you want. Yeah, I couldn't figure out a plan. So I think it's Maybe we could good find to... a good plan yeah, for you. Yeah, I think it's good to look at it. That was the whole problem. <laughs> I don't think the London's boring. You should play a D5 here. But it's okay to play C3. Mm-hmm. Now here I would play e4, but you don't like to do that. <laughs> you like to play like a London. Um, I play that sometimes, actually. <clears throat> All right, so here you're just a little bit better. It's um, 
Uh, like, for example, if we put a, the black pawn back here and white's pawn here and your knight there, mm -hmm. that's theory, pretty much. You've had that position against Joa, and you play a4, a5. Mm -hmm. And uh, here it's better for you because he took trading these two pawns, which doesn't really help black, doesn't hurt too much. But anyways, you got your knight to a better square because he took so early. Mm -hmm. You got your knight here instead of there. So this is a good version of that London setup. So you should be a little bit better here. Your plan is definitely, because there's an open C file, your plan is to attack on the queen side. Whenever there's an open file, usually you can make a plan around that. So you could also move your queen and play rook f c1. You still have this idea to play a4, a5. That's always an idea mm -hmm. when they fee and cut out their queen bishop. I know, I forgot about it until it's too late. It's too late. Uh, I played b6 for the main. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He likes to play b6, you know. Mm -hmm. This structure doesn't look like a good structure for black. It's in the problem is that, you know, it's it's sort of an exchange Slav structure, but he didn't play d5 and e6 and develop his bishop in an exchange Slav way. He put his bishop here, which is a little worse because this is like very solidly defended and he can't break with c5 anymore. So he has to break with e5 now. But breaking with e5 creates a lot of weaknesses on d5 and d6. Because, you know, you can never control those squares ever again. So that structure is, is kind of poor because of that. But again, if the knight was here and we put the pawns back, that's just a normal theoretical position in, in the London. But this is just a better version of that. Because your knight is better. Yeah, a4 is fine. Trading's fine. I mean, it's a little weird to play rook c1 then a4, right? Because you'd rather play a5 with the rook mm -hmm. behind it. Even still, you could play a5. You could also play bishop a6. This is a common way to win the file. Because then you gain the file because he can't. Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, that's a common idea as well in this sort of situation. <laughs> a drawish boar fest? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so... Okay, but this is okay. I mean, this is fine. You just gained a lot of space on the queen side. You have another plan to put your knight here. That's a plan. Mm -hmm. You have to go like this, I suppose. You could totally do that. You could also then play bishop f3. Knight e1, knight d3, bishop f3, knight b4, trade white square bishops, knight c6. If you get those moves in, you've, you know, he has to do something. Otherwise, if you get those moves in, you're going to be better. He probably will play e5 while you're doing those maneuvers. Where you could just take once and move your bishop. Mm -hmm. Hey, working class hero, you didn't get a notification? Darn. You were correct that, hey, you, ha that you should play bishop g3 instead of bishop h2. But that doesn't matter. I mean, honestly, you didn't really make any mistakes. You just played way too slowly. Yeah. That's, that's all the, that's, That was the only problem, was no. the, the slowness. Yeah. Oh, now, Seth, let's see. It's a stream that's not doing the bot battle. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I actually wanted to do that. I did want it. I thought it looked like it would be fun to do, and I forgot about it, and that's what happened. Oh, you got notified then? I assumed so, because he was here. He was the first one here. <laughs> I thought the bot battle looked fun. I just didn't get it together. Wasn't King H2 a bit weak? Because Bishop G3. You mean Bishop F3, John John. I mean, that matters so little, but yeah. I mean, he could have doubled your pawns at the end, but you're already going to lose on time at that point. Mm -hmm. like you should trade white square bishops here. Said he played here, so he could have doubled your pawns, is what John's oh, saying. Oh, I see, yeah. But hardly it matters I've at all. just been off all day. I woke up at 5 in the morning with just the worst headache. I was actually crying. I took four Advil, and it finally went away. <laughs> so I've just kind of been off all day, like in a fog. So I need to go faster. yeah. Let me see. It's already 34 minutes. Should I play maybe one more? And then All right, play? yeah. I'll play one more game, and then we're going to start a lesson of some sort. I guess the nun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We need a bin bot. I agree. There should be a bin bot. <laughs> yeah, I would have played queen c2 in the final position. John, John. Definitely. Yeah, there should be a Ben fine gold bot. How is there not one? Yeah. 
I'm not sure about it. I wasn't sure who you were playing, then after the first move, I knew it was Nur. <laughs> oh, you did? Yeah, he loves to play F4. Oh. He always plays the Dutch, and he plays one F4. <laughs> didn't rem even remember. <laughs> <laughs> I never played him, but actually, I did play him once. Yeah. I remember. He played, uh... No, he didn't play the Dutch against me. He played the closed Benoni. Mm -hmm. I feel like Ben might be a robot in real life. He's always saying and doing the same things. <laughs> yeah. Except a robot wouldn't go to a car wash. Uh, that's not true. Bender went through a car wash, I remember. Yeah, the programmed Ben bot. <laughs> ben is not Mr. Krabs. Okay. Hey, did you watch the stream last night at all? I couldn't remember. A little, yeah. Uh, I was watching, I got like enthralled in this uh, Netflix documentary about Scientology. Oh, yeah. So good. I love it. Mm. So uh, I had to watch that, I guess. But why did you mention the stream? Did you... Was there something funny that happened? Oh, no. I Ben played in the Pac-Man tournament. Right. Yeah. yeah, I saw like round one or two, mm -hmm. one, one and or two. Yeah, he beat um, Gotham Chess. I do remember that, Kangaroo. Yeah. I was very happy about that. That's ravioli, ravioli. Give me the formuoli. <laughs> hey, Salty. How's it going? <laughs> yeah, Karen is playing viewers. This will be the last viewer she plays for now. And then we're going to look at that give, nun book. Give Osati a shout out. Oh, I did see him beat Levy, yes, in the uh, oh, the Budapest see. Gambit. Yeah, I gotta give Salty a shout out. I cannot take there now, is it? Oh, no, that won't work. It's done. <clears throat> yeah, I was on Salty's. Uh, Stream this morning. It's true that everyone who knows that the bird is the word. Mm -hmm. It's at least greater than or equal to the word. Have you ever read Oiva and Kramer's middle game books? Yeah, uh, I haven't read them, but I do have a student who reads them. There, there is like part one and part two. It seemed pretty good. Seemed like a pretty good book. Or a couple of books, as it were. Mm -hmm. Ben was on fire yesterday. You mean with the jokes or the playing chess? Uh... Bird greater than or equal to the word? Um... <laughs> jokes, of course. Right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, it's C.L. Smith. How's it going, C.L.? Hey, C.L. Smith. How's it going? Sorry. I can hear the rain. Pretty sure that's rain. God but have damn. you ever seen the rain? Yeah, it is. It was. It's raining like crazy today. Traffic getting here was terrible, even though I live like 10 minutes away. It took me like almost 20 minutes. I just can't ever see these night forks. <laughs> Who will stop the rain? Yeah, CCR loves to sing about rain. That yeah, and water in general. Yeah, yeah, and water. Yeah, <laughs> like Green have, River. Yeah, they have a, a lot of water imagery. Um, yeah, Green River is a great song. Mm -hmm, I love that one. I sing CCR at karaoke. Springsteen sings about fire. Hmm. I'll oh, have yeah. to take your word on that. I don't really know much about Springsteen. Do you see the rain looking out your back door? That's a good one. A combo. <laughs> oh, yeah. The, the, he can hear the rain through the... The microphone here. Oh, really? Yeah, it's pretty loud. It was, it was noisy rain. It's mm -hmm. kind of not as noisy now. Oh, fire. He's a great killer, too. <laughs> hmm. 
Hmm. Does it snow? It snows sometimes, but not very much. Yeah. Get a little snow. Looks like Nerd might get you this game, huh? Yeah, you know, it's looking a little rough for me. <laughs> Spencer, have you ever trained blindfolded blindfold or did you just come naturally? Um Yeah, I mean actually I remember when I was a little lower rated I did try some blindfold training, but only for like maybe a month or two, then I sort of got bored with it and never did anything specific for blindfold chess ever again. Um, I don't think I'm the best blindfold player around. You know, for, I mean, for somebody my rating, of course, I'm probably not as good as other people my rating. Or maybe just average, you know. Nothing, because uh, I haven't done any blindfold training. But I could still play a whole blindfold game. I've done it many times. It snowed in... Baham a few days ago. Yeah, we I we haven't gotten any snow. Mm -hmm. Isn't that James Taylor? What fire and rain? Darn, so you have a move. James Taylor. That's well, you know James Taylor's all right. Beham, aka Birmingham. I was thinking, does he mean Bahamas? Like, what is is Beham a place in its own? What well, Beham is just abbreviated. All right, I understand that now because he explained it. Mm -hmm. It was Birmingham. Mm -hmm. How did Karen and Ben meet each other? I don't know. Like Archer was at a camp or something, and my dad was teaching the camp. Something like that. Yeah, that's exactly right. We we were in St. Louis for a math camp for my older son, and then my younger son plays chess too, and as do I and did I at the time. So we just uh, he took a camp a chess camp while my older son took the math camp, and Ben was one of the coaches, and that's how I met him. He really should just resign. But I will forge onward. Let's go in G4 best by test. Who made the move? Certainly it was my dad, right? Certainly. Oh, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> never. I, I always never make the move. Never resign, says Justin. I prefer to be pursued, I have to admit. I'm shyer. I don't like to make the move. <laughs> That's just, you know. Oh, Seth to. said he saw a video where a Cobian called on Archer. Yeah. <laughs> That's, That's funny. funny. That's funny. It would have been that summer. That's it. That's um, July, July of 2015. That's so funny. <laughs> What's your rating, Spencer? It's about 2,200. Yeah, we were in the class, the classes, and, um, et cetera. Let me make some. Oh, shit. How am I not? All right, I'm, I'm resigning. Well, hold on. I, I'm resigning. But you didn't even hang it because his rook is hanging. Oh, I didn't even see. I just, <laughs> it, I'm just, but he could have won two pieces for rook. Yeah. Let me just go ahead and move on. I'm ready for just. Yeah, I. <laughs> Maybe it was premature, but I was just mad and flustered. <laughs> Spencer, the enemy beat last week beat Hikaru yesterday. Therefore, I beat that. Hikaru by transitive property. Yeah. That's so funny that he heard Archer in the audience. That is pretty funny. Mm -hmm. All right, let's see what's going on here. Yeah, usually uh, Bishop F5 is pretty rare. I would say probably you should play Bishop G4. That's the, like... The main okay. recipe, I guess. It's not really a main line, but... It, you know, if, if you want to play this solid way, usually bishop g4. Not that this is terrible, but...
but probably white is pretty comfortable here. Yeah, so when you have the structure where they're playing f4 and c4, I would almost always take the c-pawn. I want to open up the position when they've made all these pawn moves. You know, like, I would never take if this pawn was here. But I like to take here because, I mean, this is weak, too. Like, d3 is weak, and if they ever play d4 to get rid of their d3 weakness, then e4 is permanently weak because they've played f4. So I would like to take here, generally, to try to get at this weakness. Okay. You know, you could take, and then you get an open file to that square. And again, if they ever play d4 to rectify that, then e4 is weak. Not that you have to do that, that just seems natural to me. Mm -hmm. Here, I don't know, I guess c takes is interesting. I'd probably take this way, but it looks okay. Knight a3, also interesting. I thought since the file was open already, that if I took, then I could take the file. Well, but why can't he take the file? Yeah. You know, it's, it, basically, I would play c takes if, like, in the last game, you could play knight c6. The last game, it was you had white, but you played knight c3. Yeah, yeah. that's true. That, that's why I would prefer to take that. If I can't do that, I'm almost always going to take this way, you know. Mm. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's what I was expecting. So it looks kind of normal. Oh yeah, this is a terrible move. Jeez. I couldn't believe you took this way. I mean, this is... Never mind that it's maybe a tactical problem. Mm -hmm. Never mind that. I was thinking I could get the uh, rook out. It's not worth to weaken this mm -hmm. and give yourself three pawn islands. I mean, H takes, you only have one pawn island. I didn't think... two I mean, pawn islands, you know. I see the pawn islands now, but yeah. I didn't think about it at the time. At least nine times out of ten, when you have this choice, it's H takes. Mm -hmm. But I notice when lower-rated players play, it's like more than 50% they play F takes, no matter what the position I know, is. I usually take towards the center. Yeah, but uh, H takes is almost always the case. H takes is nice, too, because you could break with G5 later mm -hmm. after a little bit of preparation. All you need to do is move your knight, then G5 is protected. I didn't think about all that. But yeah, F takes is so weakening, and it's even a tactical problem because F of what what happened in the game. F takes G6, you, do, I didn't even... Uh, that is like a Scottish <laughs> demon goat kind of thing. Oh, I didn't even notice that you did that. <laughs> um, you were looking at Morphe's game with the Dutch. At some point he played C5, like he played C4, and the note by Lowenthal said structure <laughs> similar to the Sicilian, and I was like, what are you talking about? Yeah, obviously they didn't know what was going on back then. Mm -hmm. Hey, PPRTS1. After HG, you're doing wells. Pretty funny. Mm -hmm. That must have been my dad's joke, huh? Anyways, B4. Now, so the reason he did this is because of that, obviously. This is the same situation as last time. You have a pawn that's loose. It's attacked and defended the same number of times. Didn't really notice it. You just backed it up. So you could try to make it messy like this. No, no, that hangs the knight. I didn't notice that. That would be too messy. <laughs> so yeah, you, you, then what's your other option? This? Then just takes. That doesn't help. No, there's nothing to do, right? So let me just ask in general. So if something is um, attacked and defended once, and like in this example, um, is that just, I should just be paying attention to it? Yeah, exactly. And, and I don't necessarily have to tie down another. You might piece have to, to right? It. You okay. might. It depends exactly. But I should be giving it an extra. Yeah. Well, this is how. Uh -huh. Yeah, this is exactly like what my dad says. Okay. You know, if you have a piece that's defended a lot and not attacked like this, mm -hmm. you just sort of ignore it, right? Or if you have a piece that your opponent is attacking like this, then you have to move it. You will move it like you did. Yeah. But lower rated players, they don't care enough about this, where this is like a a tense situation, right? Maybe you have to defend it, maybe you don't, but you're going to have to kind of figure it out, you know, mm -hmm. depending on the scenario. Exactly. I mean, I'll tell you, <laughs> obviously it's wrong thinking, but what I'm, th what I'm thinking about as a lower rated is the fact that it's fine, it's got a defender. <laughs> right, but it's not fine. I know. Because you could get kicked away. But, uh, That's why Nimzovich was a big fan of overprotecting. Over, yeah, overprotecting him. Yeah. And his point is, like, if you do defend this a lot, like this, mm -hmm. then all of your pieces can move. 
because this is over defended, like right now your knight can't move. So if you want to go do something with your knight, whatever, later in the game, you can't. But if you do over defend like Nimzovich likes, then I can move my knight later and I don't have to worry about this. So over protecting gives you uh, more flexibility in your piece placement. Yeah. Because your pieces can all move. Um, that being said, I don't really think overprotecting is so important all the time. Yeah, because then you might miss some opportunities by being too safe, it seems. Yeah, like exactly, maybe. right. In fact, yeah. they were discussing this. Uh, mm -hmm. Laco was talking about how uh, they were interviewing. This is something I tell my students all the time. There, There's a, a, an interview with Duda, and they asked Duda, like, why did you play such a sharp, aggressive way against, like, I think it was Mama Jarov. Mm hmm and Duda's like, well, doing nothing is also risky. Doing yeah. nothing is also, if you do nothing, your opponent just gets every Comes option. In on you. <laughs> so that's what it is. And yeah, so you have to balance, of course. You can't always just do one thing. Yeah. Is it more relevant to capture with F pawn if white hasn't castled? I, castling with, uh, capturing with the F pawn is, is almost always wrong. You only do it because you want some specific thing for your rook right now, which never happened in this game. Mm -hmm. and usually doesn't when people play F takes. It's very rare that F takes is correct. There are some times in the French defense you play F takes because, like, your bishop's already defending E6, and F takes opens up your rook, and then you can break anyway. So F takes isn't weakening E6 so much. But here, or in most scenarios, it's almost always H takes, yeah. Your, your, <laughs> ma, your mom was a fan of ever protecting Lords of Acid? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mama's boy, but not a bed wetter. <laughs> <laughs> she, could she push e6, e5? No, because it's her turn, or it's her opponent's turn. After b4, I was considering this, but you could just take it, and then there's no trickery and deceits here. So, yeah, there's nothing that she could do at this point. This is right after she played f takes, she got hit with b4. But yeah, then after that, the rest of the game, nothing much happened. It was just down material. And he kept giving you more time, too. It's kind of weird. He mm -hmm. gave you, like, almost two two minutes more. <laughs> yeah. yeah, now here, you, like we were saying, your knight's not exactly hanging, because this is hanging. But he could take here first and win two pieces for a rook. And now he's up a piece instead of the exchange. And he has, you know, protected pass pawn. It's the easiest win ever. Mm-hmm. Good game. Yay. Thank you, Jay, Jay Jern, for the sub, prom sub. No, after F, 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 FG, the game's over, Justin. Yeah. You, you could still lose that. Hmm? The, the final position, I think. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, Good let's, game. Let's get started on a lesson. I All think. right. I need the, uh, the, oh, the iPad, iPad. Yeah. Let me see. And then also, it's. Kind of late. Let me just check my text real quick. All right, it's almost five already. It's kind of strange, but maybe that's all right. There you go. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wish I'd gotten it together enough to do the bots thing. Yeah, that did seem pretty <laughs> cool. Yeah, it looks like fun. Oh, you found out about the stream from my dad retweeting your Twitter. Pretty funny. Oh, yeah. So your tweeting did work. <laughs> At least got one viewer, minimum, <laughs> if not more. Yay, welcome. We're a nice stream over here. Occasionally we get into some gossip chat, but we're generally friendly over here. Did you say we're mm -hmm. an ice stream? Nice. Oh, I know. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah, instead of a nice stream and ice stream. <laughs> Have you guys noticed um, that um, there are a lot of buzzwords in different industries? And it's just normal well, tech industry or whatever. And the Twitch buzzword that I'm hearing a lot right now is um, wholesome. We're wholesome. And in fact, when Jack Septic Eye um, donated a hundred dollars to the stream anonymously, he said we were a wholesome stream. 
Anyway, I just thought it was funny. I see that word everywhere. Wholesome this, wholesome that, wholesome straight. <laughs> and I was telling Ben how much Anna Chess likes to say wholesome. It could almost be a drinking game. She's <laughs> like, oh, she does have a wholesome stream, by the way. And she says it, and I was telling him, and then I looked on the schedule for Chess TV, and the title for her stream had the word <laughs> wholesome in it. I said, see? Hmm. It's like a really popular word right now. Anyway, I have no, All right. no point other than to, to say, yeah, F3 is wholesome. Or it's we'll, not wholesome. <laughs> All right. um, so this, this section, the next two examples, including this one, uh, is going to be about inferior positions. So we'll take a look at this game. It's Nielsen against Caruana from 2010. Let's see what uh, Nunn has to say about it. Black stands worse thanks to his weak d6 pawn which white can easily attack via the half-open d-file. Yeah, graphic there. Mm -hmm. White also controls more space, although this is not very significant as several minor pieces have been exchanged. It's easy to lose a position such as this, since black has no obvious counterplay. Caruana, however, saved the game by using two basic ideas that apply to many inferior positions finding counterplay, and reducing the pressure by liquidation. I, I remember this example, because I read this book a while ago. Oh, okay. And I do specifically remember this example, because it's very su surprising how he handled this, actually. All right, bishop e6. Developing a piece and attacking the c-pawn, so that even if white plays rook a d1, uh, he will not immediately threaten to win the pawn, because the c-pawn will be falling b3. Unavoidable sooner or, la or, or later, since otherwise white will never threaten to take on d6, as was previously indicated. a5 exclam. The start of an excellent defensive plan. Black will meet rook a d1 with c5, allowing him to defend the d-pawn with rook a6, mm -hmm. while the advance of the pawn to a4 will not only reduce the material on the board, but also open the a-file for possible later counterplay. Moves such as this may not get the same plaudits? 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 Yeah, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, but it means like accolades. As brilliant sacrifices, but they are just as instructive. Come on, quit using words I don't know, none. <laughs> get out of here with that. Oh, it's just an older word. Even if my position is it? Plot it's. Is that how to say it? Yeah. Plot it's. Plot it's. I believe it. Just reading some of the chat. H5. Mm -hmm. Bishop takes H5 would be good. Yes. So he does double it up. And then C5. Making the D-pawn permanently backwards. It may look dreadful, but it's the only way to avoid losing a pawn. A single weakness is usually not fatal in itself. But black must ensure that white is not given the time to improve his position and provoke another weakness somewhere else on the board. Back it up, and then a4. <laughs> Queen c1. For the moment, white cannot make progress since the d-pawn can be attacked three times and defended three times. One, two, three. Uh, the only chance for white to increase his advantage is on the king side but preparing any kind of pawn advance there is clearly going to take some time. It actually goes to a3 here, counterattacking. Black makes use of the open a file to counterattack the b3 pawn. Expelling the rook from a3 but relieving some pressure from d6, it's evident that white is unable to force black into the type of total passive position necessary to give him time to make progress on the king side. Rook b8 exclam. Another fine defensive move. The pressure is momentarily off of d6, so black takes his chance to force through b5. Yes, which will leave white with a weakened queenside pawn. Exactly, after b5, white's guaranteed an isolated pawn, no matter what. Queen d2, b5. 
Black is fully equalized, since exchanging on b5 leaves the b3 pawn just as weak as d6. Why not take that b-pawn the last few moves? It's protected. I assume you meant bishop takes, but it's protected. Unless there's a trick you wanted, but no. Anyways, b5. Black is fully equalized, I already said that. So it takes, takes all these captures. There. And rook e8 exclam, the final finesse. Rook b5 leaves black's rook in a passive position and allows white to play on. For example, check, check, and here. Yeah, that's annoying. Mm -hmm. After takes takes, we'll get a pass to e-pawn. And your king will be weak, and g6 will be weak. Not clear. Not clearly equal. Rook e8 exclam equalizes. Draw agreed. Yeah, great defense by Fabi. I mean, you look at this position and it's just clear that black's worse. It looks like an English player's dream. Like Yasser would love this position with white. Great bishop, easy pressure on the d-file, backwards pawn. But Fabi, with some unusual moves, held it together. I mean, a5, a4 is a great idea, but c5, right? c5 is not the move you want to play. But he knew that he could get this counterplay, made a little luft counterplay here, and then the best moment was the uh, rook b8 for b5, liquidating into a draw, and rook e8 exclam, forcing it. Very nice defense. He made it look easy to defend a very difficult looking position. Mm -hmm. What if white had played e3? When? Maybe around here? Like this? Probably. Yeah, I mean, I guess I would go here. Like, this is better than defending with rook b5. The rook on e5, for example, it stops. There's no bishop e4 check, like there was in that other position. So this wouldn't be as big of a problem. And then we can play bishop e6 and, and c4. Maybe even black could be better there. Probably not. They just play bishop e2, actually. So I, I guess I can't even play c4. Oh, I could, I could, I could. But okay, I don't, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. Yeah, I mean, he could have played e3 and, and played this position, but it's still it's still pretty drawish, you know. It's still pretty drawish. Yeah. You'd l lose this rook endgame 100 out or 10 out of 10? <laughs> yeah, I mean, against Fabi, maybe. <laughs> against Fabi or Nielsen, yeah. All right, one more, huh? Yeah. For defending bad Seven positions. Let me just see if we miss you in chat. Here's one of my personal favorites, too, Gashimov. Yeah, I do have noted you like Gashimov. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Yeah, somebody was asking, I can't remember, about wholesome. That's not an offensive word at all. It's, yeah, you know. what? It's the opposite of an offensive <laughs> word. And then the suspenser was asking who gave us the donation. I was talking about a while back, this YouTube YouTuber and also Twitch guy, Jack Septic guy. Went around giving some smaller streams anonymous donations, and that's what I was referring to. He said we were wholesome. I was watching a uh, American Dad. Yeah. And uh, at one point he's like, "How did you learn how to do something?" And she goes, "I learned it from watching YouTube." Oh. I learned it from watching YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> Too funny. Carlson is white against Gashimov. Gashimov. There we go. This is from 2008. So Carlson wasn't yet the strongest player in the world, I don't think. But he was going to be. Maybe he was already highest rated. At least. Yeah. Hard to remember. It's from Baku. Gashimov's home turf. Let's see if anybody said anything the last few seconds. Carlson, who's that? Let's play a game later, Nur. All right, all right. Mm -hmm. Hey, Jay. This position is very unattractive for black. White has two bishops in an open position, a splendid outpost for his rooks on c6, and a ready-made plan of a4, a5. 
to break open black's queenside. As always, the defender should look for any elements of the position that favor him. Here, there's only one. Using his central pawn majority, he may be able to create a passed pawn with d5. Yeah, this is a lot like how in your game it was, uh, it must have been Scottish Demon Goat. C6 was weak, right? Because he played d6 and b6, and I was telling you to get your knight in there. But Magnus already has his rook in there. Pretty mm -hmm. good, too. He doesn't yeah. even have a knight, so he can't put it there. Yeah, definitely a weak square. All right, so here Gashimov played 98 x -clam. Yeah, probably Anand was highest rated, yeah. Yeah, probably Anand was highest, and he was world champion. The immediate d5 question mark is bad due to e5 and bishop d4, blockading the d-pawn and sealing black's minor pieces out of the game. Yeah, indeed, they can't even hardly move. By removing the knight first, which is what he did in the game, playing knight e8, uh, black prevents the reply e5. If d5, e5, we just take it. So he's preparing e5, d5 rather by playing knight e8. Exactly. If white is given a couple of spare tempi, he will increase his advantage by pushing the a-pawn, so it's essential to keep him off balance. Great move, knight e8. Bishop t2, dubious. The right idea, opening the e-file uh, in order to prevent d5, because d5 would be met by e5. Actually, there's a pin now, so d5 will be just met by taking it, right? Oh, yeah. And you can't take with the rook because the bishop's there. But this is an inaccurate execution. Scottish Demon Goat's favorite, bishop c1, is better. So as to meet bishop d4 with queen d2, fork has to go back and then etc like he wants to do mm. yeah who is Morozovich and why has he dropped 120 points in the last 12 years I mean you don't know who Morozovich is <laughs> you don't know why people lose rating points what's going on here <laughs> yeah Morozovich is definitely one of the most exciting players of the late 90s early 2000s but uh, yeah he got you know he got a little older so didn't doesn't play as well most of people knew what a chess so they wouldn't necessarily know. Mm -hmm. All right, I mean, in 2008, I was still in high school, so... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was kind of a while ago. But yeah, Morozovich was definitely a very exciting player. If you like some unorthodox openings, he's the guy to look for. He likes to play Albin Counter Gambit and Chigorin and other weird stuff. Okay, but Bishop D2 dubious. Yeah, Archer should check him out. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Now, that's true. Not everyone studies chess players. Yeah, that's that's fine. I like learning a little bit here and there about the different players. <laughs> Bishop d4 now, and now you can't play queen d2 like we saw in the other variation. Oops. Delete move. In the other variation, we were playing queen d2 for king, but now he can't because he played bishop d2 instead of bishop c1. So bishop d4 x clam. Black displays another important defensive attribute: flexibility. Having persuaded the white bishop to abandon this diagonal. Uh, black occupies it with his own bishop, securing it by e5 if necessary. Uh, this greatly reduces the impact of white's a4, a5, since now b6 is defended by the bishop. White can, of course, exchange dark square bishops, uh, but this leaves him with an inactive g2 bishop, being blocked by the e4 pawn, in the case of e5. Yeah, exactly. And also that would give away his bishop pair, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So he goes for a4, e5. He plays h4 now. White achieves nothing if a5, knight c7. So putting a little pressure. Uh, fo or followed by knight e6, yeah. Solid knight there. Very nice how he organizes pieces like this. You know, from the start. You wouldn't really expect the knight to go to e6 and the bishop to be on d4. You know, from here, for example. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't really expect the knight to go to e6 and bishop on d4, but that's his idea. And then knight to e6. Really nice construction there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so he goes for h4. He, he toys with the idea of weakening the enemy kingside with h5. 
So knight back to f6 then. He doesn't go knight c7. Knight c7, h5, followed by bishop h3. Gives white some kingside pressure. Yeah. So black takes steps to rule that out by playing knight f6. Now he can't play this without losing the pawn. So bishop f3. And queen e6. How's it going, bowler? Hey, bowler. How's it going? You showing up tonight or what? Come on. <laughs> I don't think you were here last time, were you? I don't remember now. Um... It seems so long ago, last week. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Awesome. And oh, cool. a, a booty bandit's in here? Just don't take any booties while you're here. Where's the booty bandit? He's uh, green. Oh, oh no, I green. see it. Hey, booty. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. All right, so queen e6, dubious. Hey, MG weirdo. Black plays to prevent h5, but pins his own d-pawn. And rules out counterplay with d5, because, you know, it's pinned now. The simplest solution here is d5, followed by e4. This looks like the most complicated solution, but, <laughs> but <laughs> <coughs> after rook takes, black's active pieces in short equality. Hmm, I wonder why he didn't do this, because you'd expect if rook takes that black's happy now. Mm -hmm. You know, compared to this position, you'd love to trade these two pawns with black, right? Yeah. Because you got a weak backwards pawn. So if this does work, then it's obviously the right thing to do. So he must have thought there was some trick trickery here, some trickanery. He could have even been worried about something like this, but I don't really think so. You know, like takes and takes this and then push. I don't know. Would he really care about that? Maybe it's something like here and then fork. But at the end, his bishop's hanging. So there are things to be worried about that don't work, I guess. But you'd expect him to calculate much better than, than this. So it, it might have been something deeper that I'm not understanding. Or maybe he thought that like it wasn't so good for him and he was even trying to be better here. That's possible as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe pick it the engine. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? I mean, it, it, D5 is the best move, but he oh, just okay. didn't. I'm just trying to figure out why he wouldn't oh, want okay. to play it. I the engine's not going to tell me that. Oh, would it just from looking at other possibilities? Well, the engine will tell you the best moves, mm -hmm. but it won't tell you why somebody didn't play a move. You have to sort of figure that out. You can use the engine to help you figure that out. Yeah, that's all, man. Yeah. White trades off mm -hmm. dark square bishops. Right, Bonarici. Uh, what's his name mentioned mm -hmm. that? None already mentioned that. Uh, well, trading off dark square bishops leaves you sort of a bad bishop. All right, stuck behind e4, and it gets rid of your bishop pair. Um, but here, for example, well, the problem is also that the pawn is defended twice, and it can only be attacked twice, right? So it's not like you're going to win the d-pawn. I think the b-pawn is the, is the target. The real target is the b-pawn. But even still, that can be defended with knight d7. But maybe trading bishops could be a way forward, but it does have the downside of giving up the bishop pair all the time. So that's probably why he doesn't want to do it. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Probably thought the bishop could get to e4. Right. You mean here? I don't know. What? And discovered the queen with g6 check? That, none of that made any sense. g6 check? This is g6. You're crazy talking. <laughs> As usual. Yeah. No, I don't know. This looks f safe and correct. But uh, it's also possible he thought that's just equal and he actually wants more. Gashmo is a pretty ambitious player. King g2. You're just improving, right? Mm -hmm. h5, gh, bishop takes, question mark, fails to queen h3, exclam. Double attacking. But... Instead of h5 even, bishop e3 as suggested by Bonarici, exclam. Takes, takes, gives white some advantage as a5 can't be prevented. And yeah, this is what I was worried about is the pawn, right? The b pawn. The d pawn's fine, but the b pawn is the target. We'll have to play a passive move like this 
which we don't want to do. I'd mm-hmm. rather my knight there. Now we're talking. Illegally just put it there. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, this would have been the best way to go. But uh, like I said, Magnus didn't want to do it because he doesn't want to give up two bishops, right? So he just improved with king g2 and queen c4. Bishop e3 takes, takes. Queen a2 is okay for black, preventing a5. Yes. Um... Also, a7 is... Oh, this this is the deal. a7 is defended. So if you play a5 takes, you can't play queen takes. That was the difference as opposed to earlier, before he played. Like in this position, instead of king g2, if bishop e3 takes, takes... Ah, sorry, bishop e3 takes, takes. If you play queen e, a2 still, we'll play a5. And rook is not here, like it was in the other position. Mm. So after takes, takes, this is hanging, and this is hanging, and white has made progress, serious progress. Mm. But after king g2, rook d7 gives him the appropriate amount of time to handle bishop e3. We can trade to play queen a2 and just take this. And you don't have queen a7 anymore. Spencer going for gm now. <laughs> <laughs> Not exactly. <laughs> Might have to get to fm first. Right. <laughs> so he trades queens. The ending promises white little, as the d4 bishop is such a useful defensive piece. And offensive piece, too. Oh, with that knight d4 move? Oh, right, right. Then I would get that GM title. Honorary. There's some moves were played. Moving around and around. Round and round. <laughs> you know that song? Classic song. Oh, yeah. Terrible. <laughs> Terrible stuff. A5. White finally makes this advance, but black counters it easily. D5. Again, the bishop's always defending this, so we don't have to worry. Yeah, who sings that song? I don't know, 38 special or something terrible. <laughs> so, something like that. Mm -hmm. Bishop g5. Interesting. A neat try, but it does not disturb the balance. So he's sacking the exchange. Rat sings that? <laughs> <laughs> Close. <laughs> I forgot about that band. E4 X clam, cl clearing e e5 for the bishop. The power's going out again. We have lots of power here. <laughs> but, um. And etc. Draw agreed. Black, I guess, would play here if it wasn't agreed, though. Yeah, this part of the book great. is defending inferior positions, right? Yeah. You like rat? What? Mm -hmm. They're not great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't usually like that kind of music, but um, some of it I appreciate. Okay, that's it. That makes one of us. <laughs> In that same... Um, like some of those Van Halen songs. I love those songs. I love those well, obviously Van Halen's better than the other stupid hair bands, but <laughs> I still don't even like Van Halen that much. <laughs> yeah, and... Um, R.I.P. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this was a very difficult position. Yeah, that one was hard. And to understand here. Wore me out. Even Magnus made some inaccuracies. There's no way you would have made any of these moves, Bonarici. Yeah, obviously mm -hmm. not. I wouldn't have even played knight e8. I mean, I would have played d5, and then after here, I would have got crushed. <laughs> That's what would have happened. Mm -hmm. But knight e8, x-clam. Very nice. Then d5, you can't play e5. That was already a good hard. start. Yeah. Well, we shouldn't play. I mean, Hikaru doesn't want to play us, Jay Jern. You should play Hikaru. <laughs> I mean, he could take off multiple pieces off the board and still beat me. So, <laughs> but I would, you know, I would love to play him. I'm banned from his channel. So, <laughs> step one would be he's got to unban me. But no, he has nothing to gain from playing us. 
Um, oh, I have a joke uh, that I could say. Yeah. Uh, what do Donald Trump's children say when they accidentally bump into you? Uh, this is going to be the dumbest joke. <laughs> this is going to be so dumb. Yes, yes, yes. It's going to be so dumb. I don't know. Pardon me. Uh, that's <laughs> Thaddeus bad. got it. Uh, Thaddeus got it. Pardon me. That's bad. <laughs> no, that was good. <laughs> oh, Laszlo's here. How's it going, Laszlo? Laszlo, you forgot. Oh, well, no. Hey, there's five. It's Tuesday there's now. Five, yeah, there's, it's Tuesday, Laszlo, right. not Wednesday. <laughs> that's one problem, and there are five Tuesdays. So even if you come next Tuesday, there's still four rounds left. Yeah, come on. <laughs> Come on, Laszlo. Show up on Tuesday, not Wednesday. Yeah, I'm not sure why I'm banned, Jay Jern. I'm a, a Hikaru fan. But um, <laughs> he doesn't like my husband. Or but, my dad. Uh, yeah. But I don't think that's why, because I don't think he had anything to do with it. He probably doesn't even know. I think the, the mod over there doesn't like me or my husband. It's really... Mm -hmm. So, I'll, you know... Oh, Ben earned his ban. I did not earn a ban. Did not earn a ban. All right. <laughs> is Spencer... I'm not banned, actually. I can watch his stream and chat. Mm -hmm. I never do, of course, but, you know, I could. I watch it. I just, you know, can't chat. It's fine. I don't need to chat. You can just go on my account and chat. <laughs> no, I had, I had an alternate account <laughs> for a while that was called yeah. uh, Not not Karen ATL Chess <laughs> That's like trying not to learn. <laughs> and That's had, a good one. And I had a sub on that account. <laughs> <laughs> That's too funny. I didn't expect that. Did you sub yourself or were you gifted I sub? I subbed it. <laughs> but um, I knew that if I, if I typed something, it would only be good right. one time. And yes. then I was going to get banned. You only get one shot. One shot. One <laughs> shot in life. Much like Eminem. Right. That's it. <laughs> one shot. If you only. <laughs> and anyway, so yeah, I, I had the fake, and I was going to try to type something, but I knew I'd get banned immediately, and I'd pay for that sub. <laughs> so then it just lapsed, and I, I never, I didn't go back on there much anymore. <laughs> so yeah, you know, I'm banned. Jay Jern. If you've got um, friends in high places, you know, get me unbanned. <laughs> I even requested an unban, and it, it now says when I go to that page, you requested. Denied. <laughs> you requested an unban on October, blah, 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 and it was, your request was denied. Suck it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I think we can keep going. I guess I'm surprised my kids aren't here yet. Yeah, what's going on with that? Yeah, my children are getting dropped off at the chess club. What time are they but, supposed um, to be dropped off? You know, off? we didn't have an exact time, and it is rainy out there. Right, probably traffic is pretty tough. Yeah, it's, probably the it's, traffic. it's rush hour, too. Yeah, that's true. Pretty sure if a Karen fan asks for a ban, you are getting an Insta ban. Hmm. What does that mean? Anyways, I can read. There's like a long introduction to this next section. All right, all right. I'll just like skip around a bit. Try to paraphrase it. That's what I'm trying to do. <laughs> okay. So we're it's not about, burdened. It's about activity. All right, activity. The term active and passive can apply to single piece or whole position. Active piece is a lot of possibilities for improvement and generating threats. Passive position obviously is not. Uh, positions can become passive for a, a wide range of re reasons. Inferior pawn structure, poor peace coordination. Uh, he gives some examples that we'll look at in the future. Tomaszewski Herulian, for example. N another Nielsen game. The initiative is another ra rather abstract concept. means being able to create direct threats and keep the opponent off balance. Uh, we'll look at an example, Adams against Howell. Because uh, he sacrificed a pawn. Some, another one, McShane Carlson. The initiative doesn't have to be based on the enemy king. Um, let's see, what else? Occupation of an open file leads to a rook arriving on the seventh rank. Shirov game, we'll look at. Shatushkin game as well. Uh, outposts are squares in advanced positions from which a piece cannot be expelled, like we saw Carlson's rook there mm -hmm. on c6. Knights are especially effective at exploiting outposts. We'll see Lake Navarra. 
If an outpost doesn't exist, it, you may be able to create one, like in Kazim Shanov Megaranto. I don't know who that is. Uh, a knight advancing an out in an outpost is awesome. I'm paraphrasing, of course. Other examples. White sacrificed pawns for that in Svidlerberg. A bad bishop is one obstructed by its own pawns. A good bishop is one which is not obstructed. Uh, take a look at Elianov, Melekov, which we will look at, of course. And Nair, Nibor, actually, against Yakovenko, which is spelled with a Y instead of a J. Mm -hmm. Interesting. There are exceptions to every chess principle. A theoretically bad bishop can prove effective, like in Rajabov, Elianov, which we'll look at. Uh, another exception is when the bad bishop is outside the pawn chain, such as Kuzubov, Ulbin, Ulibin. I've seen this guy's name. I never knew how to s pronounce it. U L Y B I N. Mm -hmm. U L Y B I N. Yeah, I've never seen that name. Yeah, I've seen it around, but I never knew how to pronounce it. Mm -hmm. In order to exploit an advantage, it's necessary to open lines. We'll see a couple of examples. Ivan Uh Giving up a pawn is called a gambit in the opening. Kravaruchko Smirin, we'll look at an example. So Navara. Sometimes a single pawn blocks, and it's so we want to make a clearance sacrifice. Grishuk Gelfand, for example. All right. Uh, range a lot of possible sacrifices we'll look at as well. But okay, the curse of passivity. This is the next section. Okay, so that that will all that was just sort of an intro to what we're about to. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. All right. <laughs> All right, much middle gameplay is based on activity. This refers not only to the activity of individual pieces, but also the activity of the position as a whole and its potential to undertake positive action. If a position is passive and offers no constructive plan, then the opponent will be free to maneuver as he likes, and sooner or later he will find a way to make progress. Just ask Duda. Well, luckily, Bonarici, I think all of that intro will be... Ex ex repeated. Yeah, it'll be expounded upon. I kind of gla glazed over myself, so I think it's okay. <laughs> but, um, hey, Rock and Jason, how's it going? You can't ask about bands on Maka's channel. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh man, this is the type of opening for me. There it is. You glazed over. <laughs> Just make sure everything's in its right place. Just like the famous Radiohead song. Crowded board. Can, can we get different names? Yeah, of course. Oh yeah, you always have to do that. For you. Right, because otherwise it messes up. I don't understand. Yeah. Yeah. All right, anyways, this is Tomashevsky against Hrulian. Mm -hmm. Tomashevsky? That looks close enough. Hrulian. There it is. Do you know what opening this is from? Um... If you don't know, you don't know. I don't know. Benoni. Oh. Yeah, this is the telltale sign right here. <clears throat> telltale sign. But also everything else is Benoni-like, too. But it's probably a King's Indian move order, since most people don't play the Benoni. Tomaszewski, who really in from 2010. Why do most people not play the Benoni? I don't know. I think it's pretty good. Yeah. But it's, uh, you know, about fashion. It's popular, yeah. You know, usually when the top players play something, then it's popular. So when Tall was world champion, people played the Benoni. And Fisher, the people played the King's Indian. Yeah, you got it, Scottish Demon Goat. All oh, right, I'm sorry. Looks like Sarawan Nunn. This is Tomaszewski Hurulian. Where did the white sea pawn go? Well, it was E takes and then C takes. Are you kidding me? It's so obvious, yes, frankly. Yeah. Yeah, all right, anyways, so... In this position from the King's Indian, this is how Nunn puts it, black strategy is based on peace activity, while white puts his faith in his extra central pawn and solid position. 
The main risk for Black is that if his activity leads to nothing, he will fall into a passive and strategically inferior position. Queen f6. Um, he also gives the move a6. King h1, rook e8. Rook g1, exclam. With the idea of g4. Favors white. Interesting idea. I wouldn't really love a6 anyway. Since he's already played a4, it's sort of like, what's the point? Mm -hmm. Rook e8 looks normal to me. Anyways, queen f6, yeah. And, oh, right, the only Benoni you play. <laughs> right, that's the closed Benoni there, check Benoni. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, queen f6, e takes f, gf, and now knight h3, a key move, preventing f4. Good RDPXI. <laughs> nice. Out the London. Great success. <laughs> knight g6, question mark, trying to force through f4, clearly. After this, black falls into a passive position. Rook a e8 is the most flexible plan, keeping the knight on a more active e5 square. In this case, white only has a slight advantage. Thank you for that gift sub, Thaddeus. Nice. Yay. <laughs> so instead he played knight g6, question mark. Really trying to get f4 going, but then here came f4, exclam. Black was threatening f4, so this is the most natural move in any case, but it also severely limits Black's minor pieces. His knights and his d7 bishop are now blocked in, and it doesn't take long to see that he lacks any positive plan. Yeah, so he can't, obviously he can't play f5, so his bishop is now limited. Mm -hmm. And he can't use his knight either to get back to e5, for example. Or his other knight can't go here. So f4 shut down all of these pieces. You'll notice that f4 was not acceptable when the knight was already on e5, because f4, knight g4 would be the answer. So he waited for the guy to move his knight, and now f4. Now the knight's stuck here. And the bishop's blocked, and f4 is stopped. And knight g5 is stopped, like I said, as well. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Note that if black had left his knight on e5, this is exactly what I said. f4 could be met by knight g4, yeah. a6. Yeah, bishop d7 is pretty sad. Hey, Pablito. Oh, my dad has some emotes I've never seen before. Mm -hmm. I think there's some special Christmas emotes, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> I'm not saying that one is one. Right, but those exist, I understand. Well, and that could be from just other channels, too. Bishop f2. Rick a8. Yeah, Keep... that's from Logic. Oh, oh, that makes sense. Probably 301 is his uh, air area code, is that right? I don't know, maybe not. <laughs> Logic emotes, yes. All right, so king h1, x clam. When the opponent has been reduced to passivity, there's almost always some way to make progress. Here, white intends an eventual rook g1 and g3, opening up the g file. Rook f7, a5, rook f e7. Doubling it up, bishop h5, knight h f8, rook g1 x clam, bishop h6, g3. <laughs> They're illogical, yes, yes. King h8, dubious. Now white has total command of the g file, but even the best defense, hg rook takes, rook g7. Leave, leaves black under tremendous pressure. After rook a g1, rook e e7, knight g5, bishop e8, h4. Yeah, black's doing terribly. Note that knight takes h4, question mark, loses. We'll take this and then play here, hitting the knight. And if the knight moves back, you lose your bishop because you interfere with your own queen thereby losing material. You could try this, right? But takes attacks the queen is the problem. So your queen and knight are both hanging. You don't have a queen move to attack anything. Because there's nothing that you can attack except this, which would take anyway. 
So he's positionally lost here, no matter what, is the moral of the story. He plays king h8. The bear is lost. Dang, bears are pretty strong. Lions, li you like lions more than bears? Lions and tigers and bears, oh my. I'm gonna go shut the door, I'll be right back. All right. Actually, maybe I can't. I'll just be right back, I'm sorry. Okay. Talk to him real quick. Sure. I can read some chat. <laughs> Sports ball, yeah, seriously. Sports, do 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 sports, do 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 Giants lost games. Polar bears. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, who cares about sports? Come on. Yeah, you know, as a Benoni player, it is sad to see this kind of position. Black's pieces are all jumbled up and they're not very active. Like, this can't move, that can't move, this can't move. Even this is kind of bad. You know it's bad when your dark score bishop's bad in a Benoni. Because that's, like, the whole point of playing the Benoni, <laughs> is you get this great bishop. So when he's stuck over here, you know, it's pretty sad. Pretty sad time. Very sorry. God. <laughs> All right. Very so, stiff. let's see. So king h8 dubious. gh opening up the g file, as was the plan and knight takes now it's white to play here white played a serious error according to none bishop takes e8 question mark allowing black a single chance to escape instead of doing that he should have played b4 x clam breaking on all sides of the board here and there um, opening a second front on the queen side after bishop g7 to target the stuff that you've weakened by playing b4 B takes C. Very complicated variation here. I Everything's mean, hanging. Who would take do that instead of taking a rook? Black's position collapses. Well, right, he did take the rook. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is what he should have done. Okay, right? God. The, the, these inhuman moves. <laughs> right. Right, no, nobody would play B4 here. All right, that's crazy. <laughs> What's the point of knight a6 to c7 maneuver in the Benoni? Well, one problem in the Benoni with your bishop and knight is that they're both sort of fighting for d7. So if you can put your knight on c7 and your bishop on d7, then they both have a square instead of them both fighting for d7. But the main point of having your knight on c7 is to play b5. It, it controls b5 there. Come on, give me the knight. Yeah, there it is. So it can control b5, or even if they play a4, a5, you can play knight from c7 to b5 and trade off knights which should benefit black because black has such less space. Yeah. Yeah. Man. All right, I gotta go back in. They're holding this finding out today. We're gonna get into Georgia. Georgia dead. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want him to hear me. <laughs> okay. So he played bishop takes e8, like Karen said, question mark. Bishop takes e8, question mark. Knight f3, x clam is the saving move. Fork town. That would be one reason why you wouldn't take here, because, you know, you needed to defend the fork. But this is still complicated. Queen d3, knight g1, take here, take that, take that. Well, these moves all make sense, yeah. Just captures. Here. White, at most, has a slight edge. And I still like white, because this looks pretty bad. It's equal material. White has this past H pawn for that C pawn. The problem for black here is that it's very difficult for black to get the three against two majority going for a past pawn. It's difficult for these three to make a past pawn against these two. Where white already has a past pawn. So in the long term, white's better. Also in the short term, white's better because this knight is pretty bad. So it's just a tough position for black, but none says that it's only slightly better for white. I don't know. I might disagree. <laughs> it looks pretty bad. Yeah. All yeah. those trades did help black, though. That's true. Mm -hmm. How do you not play knight f6? He meant knight f3. But yes, knight f3 is the move here. Right. He just took back. I mean, the guy took his rook. He took back. You can't, can't complain too much. He probably miscalculated something. You know, he thought that there is some, in these complications, that something was just totally winning for white. But it looks like these are the best captures, huh? Yeah, you might as well take, yeah. 
But maybe he thought like that white could take somehow and then no. Yeah, I don't know. He, I think that he saw knight f3, he just, in these complications, thought that white had some winning tactic that doesn't exist. Anyways, he just took back. Mm -hmm. Knight g5. Now white's back on track and wins convincing. Convincingly enough. Knight h6. Knight hg6. Rook a, e1. Yeah, it's nice to trade off the rooks when you have extra rooks, right? And you've got the only rook now. Give me that two bishops. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Defend the pawn. Still seems like it's sort of difficult to win, but... Okay, it's a, it's an extra exchange for zero pawn, so it should be a win. But winning up in the exchange is not always the easiest, you know. And no notes to these moves. That's why I'm not reading any notes. Knight h8. It's my dad's favorite move here. And he finally resigned. Hmm. Well, if he wanted to play on, he would defend the pawn, right? Like this? Mm -hmm. Now, is there some trick where I can take and take? I don't really think that works. Maybe it does. Let's look. Here? There? The only reasonable move is this, right? Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you just lost the pawn. So here, at least, you're trying to win the knight. But then we have this. This is forced mate. After here, we'll take it with the bishop checkmate. No, no, it's not mate, because you can go here. But okay, obviously terrible. <laughs> obviously terrible. You don't win the knight. So yeah, if queen f6, it would have been queen takes f5. Unless there's some other move, but I don't see it, so. That looks crushing, yeah. The knights are adorable. <laughs> <laughs> They're, uh, yeah. I think impotent would be the right word. <laughs> Um, I would see where we are with, with things. Okay. Time is it? Power 42, okay. What are your thoughts about how, I think, um... We well, I feel like I should go back up to the front pretty Brian, soon. Yeah. At some point, you know. Yeah, nobody's here. I think that we should, you know, wind it down and then I can maybe play one or two games. All right. Yeah, why don't you play a couple games then? Mm -hmm. All right, cool. We'll pick it up here next time. Yeah, you guys send me a three and a five minute challenge. I'll be right back. I just want to ask Holden if he found out. Okay. Anything I'll keep the chat busy. About How come connected rooks are good, but superfluous knights are bad? Well, connected rooks are good if a file is open. Then it helps you challenge the file. Superfluous knights... That's not how a knight moves, so it's, you know, a little different. Superfluous knights just take a square away from each other. So that's that's why they're, you know, generally not as good as, you know, connected rooks, which are really good. How much would you say knowing an opening from one side helps playing against it? Uh, hmm. The wording of your question is a little bit confusing. You know, I think that... Understanding an opening will help you play against it better, yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I mean, it, it depends on the opening, too, obviously. Some openings you need to have concrete knowledge, like a knight or, for, or a Benoni. But other openings you can play more on, on instinct a little bit. But still, it doesn't hurt to have some concrete knowledge. Okay, sorry. Yeah, superfluous knights aren't always bad, that's true. Yeah. Okay, so he got in. I actually played your dad in a simul when he came to Arkansas in 2013. Oh, that's pretty cool. I don't remember him going to Arkansas in 2013. Not that I remember every trip he's ever taken, but... <laughs> but, yeah, I don't remember him doing that, but I believe it. How did you do in the simul? Draw? Draw? It's way better for a knight to be protected by a pawn than a knight to be protected by another knight. That's very true, yes. Oh, it's Jitterbug. He's got an interesting picture, too. Come on, Jitterbug. You only Jitterbug. got nine seconds. Five seconds, Jitterbug. <laughs> Jitterbug. Uh-oh. Might be in the restroom or something. 
don't forget to X out of this game, otherwise it'll be uh, impossible to view. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. All right. Oh. <laughs> the bowler. Bowler. Keep bowling, 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 bowling. <laughs> What's most important for 1,000 rated, beginning or end game or tactics? Obviously tactics, frankly. Anytime I get superfluous knights, I always end up losing one of them. Oh, I was, you're not even 1,000. <laughs> yeah, it's tough to play a grandmaster when you're a three-digit three digit rating. Oh, sorry, jitterbug. The jitterbug said he just came back. Oh, <laughs> sorry. I figured you might have gone to the Well, if you challenge again, Karen will accept. Yeah, you can go next. Yeah. I think I'm going to do just only two games. That's fair. But that's, but you can do the next one because you were first. I actually, I've actually beaten your dad, and I brag about it at any opportunity. Well, that's good, Scottish Demon Goat. I wish I hadn't done that. Mm. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Just go back. Mm. He's like, I don't even need to win material. I'll just play positionally. I get it. Winning material is for chumps. I've always said that. Oh my goodness, just lose on time already. I know. <laughs> it doesn't even matter at all. I know. Let's make a move. I know. It's paralyzing. <laughs> That's a nice quick move. Yeah, try to make up for that. Yeah, usually when I play Blitz online, I just play very fast and bad. That's the key. To playing blitz online fast and bad fast and bad you'll get into trouble just solve it you know figure out some problems when did you first beat your dad hmm that's a good question actually i do remember i beat him uh i was like 17 or 18 i guess i beat him in a blitz game in, in michigan and all the king's men and I bought a little thing that said I beat my dad at chess. It was like a um, a bookmark. What times tournament usually end? 8.30? 8.15, I guess. I didn't hear the... Oh, okay. That for a minute it was my turn. Who's asking? Tyler. Oh. Yeah, I mean, it almost always ends. Anyways, he's been here, like, six times. <laughs> uh, uh, I don't remember. Uh, maybe the guy, maybe the owner even gave it to me. I don't remember. Yeah. Fast and bad is also my strategy in the bedroom. <laughs> it doesn't seem like a C.L. Smith kind of joke, but it was funny. <laughs> <laughs> well, you'll have to watch the uh, you'll have to watch the video on demand K two. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, he should have bought that. Maybe he did buy the book more. I can't remember. Which platform do you like more between Lee Chess and Chess.com? I like them for different things. Um, for playing people, uh, Chess.com is probably better. But for giving chess lessons, Lee Chess. And for not paying any money, Lee Chess. <laughs> Was he a proud father or annoyed that he lost? Probably both, yeah.
Mm. Bonarici says, check your time, Karen. Who's ahead in time? Mm. That is always good for me to do. Spencer rocking the soccer player look. That is not accurate at all. <laughs> but I guess you can't see much of my body, so. Position looks pretty good, though. Dang. Bowler's like, what the? <laughs> Classic Always Sunny. Okay, it's like, give me that bishop. Give me the bishop. Show me the bishop. Knife f4. It's like knife f5. There's no soccer player that looks like Spencer. What if I start kicking the ball? Then I'm, is that am I a soccer guy? Fifty most important endgame positions. Yeah, obviously Lee Chess is more free. So that's the benefit of Lee Chess. Some person I never heard of that I assume is a soccer man looks a bit like Spencer. I keep getting text messages. Come on. Quit texting me. Go, Karen. Playing faster. Mm. She's got it now. Yeah, baby, she's got it. He's got it. Made a little lift. Get down tonight. <laughs> no three nights, mate. Yeah, that is sad. That is sad that you couldn't do that three nights, mate. Never known him. <laughs> almost though. It was almost the right move. Yeah. But not quite. Now it's just Queen Ten. Here comes the counterplay. Here it comes. <laughs> Here comes the shack attack. Yeah, definitely, Ner. Certainly. A very uh, aggressive technique here by Bowler. Except for one thing. Just move already. You're down a queen. What's the matter? Uh, Try to win on time. <clears throat> nice. <laughs> Got him. <laughs> Fork down. <laughs> Good game. <laughs> it's a little late for swearing, don't you think? <laughs> Good game. Yeah, there were a lot of missed tactics that game. Yeah, you were winning like ten that. times. Yeah. <laughs> and so is he. Yeah, usually queen b6 would be the move here. Because it just runs into that. 
All right, now you have to move your queen again. Yeah. Instead, you played here losing like you saw, because after takes, which he did do, this is hanging, mm -hmm. which he didn't see. Right. He just instantly pushed. So now you're probably a little worse, but not a big deal. This should be fine. Certainly, you should take with the knight here, because after queen takes, you have to play knight e8, which is not great. Uh, yeah. You'd much rather play knight d7, then you can break. The knight guards and attacks, you know, mm -hmm. from d7. So now you're, you're worse significantly. That's good, though. Now you're doing great. Yeah, you got a break. You got a break. There it is. This break is probably worse, though, because he should take A takes. And then open up his rook. Mm -hmm. And then he'll trade, like, A pawn for either your B pawn or your C pawn, depending on how you take back. Whereas if you break the other way, like I wanted to here... If he takes, which he did that because he took on Passant, then you take back with the pawn. That's great. That's what you want. Mm -hmm. You want to do that. Or you want to take here and give yourself a passed pawn. Right. So, uh... Why not b3 trying to trap the bishop? Oh, she just moves it, right? I, he could play b3, I guess. You know? I was worried about my bishop getting trapped yeah. at some point. B3 seems okay, but I, don't, I wouldn't be too concerned about it, you know? Just move it. I like to move it to move it. Yay, PPRTS1. Oh, maybe after B5 he wants B3. Yeah, yeah, that would be the time to do it, yeah. Mm -hmm. After B5, B3. Yeah, I didn't notice that. But you could also also play uh, this. And it's messy. No, but this is, this is okay, right? Yeah, this is, uh, this is lost, yeah, this is lost. I was thinking you could get some counterplay here, but this is so weak, and this is happening. But I don't really trust it. So yeah, b3 was winning here because of this tactical variation. With b4 is the only move. Mm -hmm. It's the only legal move, otherwise you lose the bishop. And then this is, f you have to take back. Now you're a pawn down. So you don't have to take here, but you're a pawn down no matter what now. You know, I was just thinking you could try to get counterplay here, but of course, that's weak anyway. Unless you go here, in which case you can't get counterplay there. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah, B3 did win with a little tactics there. Exquisite hesitancy <laughs> when you put your queen on C8 at the end there. Hmm. Hmm. C8? That didn't... I mean, maybe later in the game he meant. Yeah, I think he means at the end. Towards the end. Yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When it trades queens and pushes the pawn, right? Yeah. So now you're probably better, I guess. I mean, it's he has weaknesses all over the place. So, and he never, he didn't play a five ever, so it's like, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. Hey, Daniel. This is great. Great. Spencer does not have his own strange jejeune, although he should get one. Nah. <laughs> yeah, great stuff. He hung his pawn. Now you're winning. So now you played a complicated move, which I thought was best, this. Mm -hmm. Of course, if you don't want to calculate and figure anything out, just move your bishop. But you took here. But now you should play knight, D th knight e3 instead of knight f4. The idea is after knight e3, he can't take here because it's fork town. Oh, okay. Or obviously your knight on f4 can't go there. I was trying to look ahead to see where, where the best place to put it. I just couldn't see that. Right, because he's trying to take... This is the deal. He's yeah, trying to yeah. take your pawn, so this is the best way to respond. Mm -hmm. Instead, you played here. Now you're you're going to lose your pawn back. Because he took it back. Right. Now here you could still try to be up a pawn by taking this, which I probably do. I like to be a pawn up. What's nice is if you do this and he tries to win your pawn like this, mm -hmm. um, you can push. And then if he takes, it's again fork town, although I'm wrong. After here, he can actually do this attacking your queen. So you don't have time to win the rook. So after here, I guess I would just go here and not try to be fancy. This comes with the tempo, and the next turn I'll go here. Yeah, that's that's fine. Then you keep everything together. So yeah, you should take a free pawn. But instead, after here, he defended his pawn. And then you checked and went back, doing nothing. Good, good. Well, you can't. You don't really get to play Spencer. <laughs> yeah, too bad. You can dream about it. <laughs> 
So now Spencer plays. Um, I've played at least two games on the stream. In and, my time. and also you play in the tur Ben's tournaments occasionally, don't you, or no? I've only done that once, oh, I think. Okay. And I won it. <laughs> <laughs> now here you have a big fork. Yeah. Instead you went there. Yeah, you're always missing your tactics. One mover, come on. I'm not good at that. Well, it's just, and I, obviously in a long game I would see that. But in a blitz it's hard yeah, to Yeah, you need to do puzzle rush every day for the rest of your life. Every day, ten times a day. I'm busy. Yeah. <laughs> like, no other chest for you, just puzzle rush. This was all good defense, though. But yeah, here you have to play queen c6 instead of queen c8. Yeah, that's dumb. And in fact, I don't even know how losing you are because you have some counterplay, mm -hmm. right? Definitely. Like, you have some counterplay. I thought counter I still chances, I, I mean, you could even be winning here. <laughs> Probably not. Mm -hmm. But it is theoretically possible it's a win. Because, like, if he plays passively, you, like, if he goes here to defend against the check and the pawn, you could still go here and do this. Mm -hmm. And now you're threatening check, king e1, knight d3, fork, the king and queen. So this is, like, actually dangerous for white. White could even be losing here. I'd like to see the evaluation. I assume white's not losing, but white could be losing. Let's see. No, so it says. It says you're just much better, yeah. Mm. More than half a pawn, almost a pawn up. Yeah, as soon as I moved there, yeah. I was like, oh, wait, that wasn't exactly right. I wasn't sure what to do. I was trying to hurry. Right. Well, obviously, you have to defend your rook, so you did know what to do there. Yeah, I just did the right but way. But you only had two options, and you accidentally picked the wrong one. Mm -hmm. A little unlucky. In your, in your mind, you're always losing, Bowler? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I could tell from the game that you don't play it particularly confidently. But obviously, you miss tactics for you and her. So you need to be better at tactics. Yeah, then you yeah. might be more confident that your moves are good because you're like, I'm good tactically now, so my move won't be punished tactically. Then you'd be more yeah. ambitious. All right, I gotta do more tactics. Certainly. Not like, but it takes a lot of time to do tactics. Each Just time. do puzzle rush, three minute puzzle rush. How many times? Like how much time? Uh, half an hour would be half good. An hour. So okay. do ten of them, you know, over the course of your day. All right, I should do. You that. don't have to do them all at once, right? That's true. I should spread them out. I keep saying every day I'm gonna do it, and I just don't. I need to. And the rest. Um. Yeah, no, I was just saying that Spencer had mentioned that I could try maybe the Petrov sometime. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking I wanted to do that sometime. That's what I was saying. I get kind of tired of only playing the French. And um, that's all I meant. Just, I need more than one response to E4. <laughs> I used to play the Sicilian. Now, who was I going to play? I remember. Jitterbug. Okay. Now, this is going to be the last game of the stream, and um, I apologize for that, but the chess club's open now. It's been open for over an hour. And um, maybe been sitting here ignoring it. In fact, it. if you want to open <laughs> the door and explore while I play, and maybe right. come back for the last review. I'm not saying you have to, but it might be a good idea just to see if anybody's here. Yeah. Make sure nobody's robbing us. <laughs> Why don't I go back to the Sicilian? Well... I'm lower rated player and the general advice about Sicilian is it's a sharp opening and not for lower rated like me. But that being said, I, I, I really enjoyed playing it. I did get into a lot of trouble. There's no denying, but I liked playing the Sicilian a lot. <laughs> I played the Nydorf and the one that I can't ever pronounce, Shiv Shiveningen. I played the, that one, too. I played the dragon, also. I think there's somebody in the bathroom. Oh, really? Yeah, because your kids are in the other room. Okay. So maybe I should be out there, huh? Um, I'd see who it is. Probably just Tyler. Tyler said he's not coming, actually. Oh, he's not coming? He has an eye injury. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, maybe come back and just do, like, a little analysis, though. All right. But, yeah, I would go investigate who's here and what's going on. Here's the situation. <laughs> um. The Scandinavian, I don't think the Scandinavian suits my style, but I should try it and not be prejudging it. <laughs> I 
there's a coach in the Atlanta area. He's pretty high rated too. He might be a feeding master. And he teaches all his students the same opening. <laughs> the Scandinavian, so it's funny. You can always tell who his students are. Petrov, yeah, I think I, I might want to try the Petrov. But I need to study it just a little bit. It looks like I could get into a bit of trouble there if I don't know at least the first you know, four or five moves. <laughs> I tried the Stafford. Oh, the Gambit, you mean? <laughs> Let me see what makes sense. I think I can do. I think they can take. Yeah, it should be fine. There's no skewer. Okay. Um, Pet Sirius says, I have done surprisingly well playing this weird C6 Pierce. Is it Pierce or Perk? Pierce, I think, recently. You only know theory until move three. Mm -hmm. Yeah, was somebody just signed up for the Blitz? Oh, they were. Well, yeah, I'm glad I, they... I never saw him before. <laughs> he said he was here like three years ago. I said, I don't even know if we've been open that long. Yeah, three years. I feel like I need to move this bishop. If I go there, then I get trapped. Come on, you're already going to lose on time. Okay, now. well. I right. don't want to play a bad move. <laughs> Just play a bad move. <laughs> That's what I do. I'm losing Stafford Endgame with a friend at the moment. Stafford Endgame. Hmm. Where's my trainer badge? Yeah, I mean, I wore them so many times that I only had eight. So after a couple weeks, it's like I've already worn them all multiple times. I don't know what theories. Well, you probably meant C three instead of C six there, Pet Sirius. But yeah, Magnus played that a lot. I saw him play E four D six Knight F uh, Knight F six and then Knight C six, which uh, I always thought was kind of weird to play Knight C six there instead of E five or or Knight B D seven or or C six with the pawn instead of the knight. Castle's Queenside like the game Fine Gold Gal fan. I don't know that game. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, Pet Serious. It's it's three. Oh, it's three Knight C6. I get you. I get you. Three Knight C, Knight C3 instead of Knight C6. I get it. I get it. Yeah, yeah. I got confused there, actually. But yeah, it's three Knight C3. Man, the king's on But yeah, Magnus played Knight C6 in that position. I've seen him do that multiple times. If White plays the Stafford correctly, he trades queens and wins. Yeah. I don't know anything about the Stafford, but other than it's a gambit. Go, Karen. This is a tough match against Jitterbug here. I mean, he's a little higher rated uh, on on chess.com, but I still feel like, you know, it's pretty even Steven, generally. Mm -hmm. I still have not seen Ben's game with Galfand. <laughs> funny if that's true. It's actually funnier if it's not true. Let's see, it's two bishops what else, but it's also isolated pawn what else. <laughs> so it's kind of hard to say who's better here. 
The theorist Hafu refuted it in Hafu Pac- Pacman, 2020. Interesting. Refuted what? The Stafford Gambit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they, were, <laughs> they were saying things like... Um, That she should be on the Olympiad or whatever. <laughs> yeah. That was just absurd. Yes, a beginner should be on the Olympiad. <laughs> well, now, there's no doubt that she um, obviously did great. Don't get me wrong. But well, I felt like... She can like, beat like 1,200. It's pretty solid, huh? <laughs> well, I felt like they went out of their way to... Um, you know, it, the intentions were good. They were just trying to applaud her efforts. I mean, she played, like, some crazy amount of chess. My family can't live in a house made of good intentions. <laughs> Classic Simpsons. Yeah. That's how, yeah, but Hafu did great, but yeah, she did, you know, not quite ready for the Olympiad. Maybe after a few years she'll be a grandmaster, <laughs> yeah. And then... <laughs> Then she can play. <laughs> you feel ashamed. Do you remember the chess? <laughs> <laughs> that is shameful. <laughs> See, I'm a strong chess player. I know nothing about that. <laughs> uh, you know, I enjoyed watching the Pog Champs. It seemed like fun. Uh, it's scary. You know what's really scary? Losing on time. Uh, true. That's way scarier than anything in the position. Mm-hmm. You can hang your queen. That's not as bad as losing on time. Oh, his majesty. It looks like he cured his gout. Starts running up in there. What the heck? Both sides know about the ensuing time scramble. Oh, but Karen forgot already. Go, Karen. Fast play. Oh, it's all right. <laughs> Mama's all right. Dad is all right. So solid. Go, Karen. Nice pre move. Great pre moves. Oh, oh it's all right. You're fine. You're fine. Now you're talking. Love it. Come on, keep pre-moving. Go, Karen. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that was good, though. I applaud your effort. <laughs> Very good. Very good stuff. <laughs> Throw the Lord. <laughs> That would be so funny to do that in real life. Just to pick up the board and throw it by accident. Oops. <laughs> Good game. All right, real quick, real quick. GG Jitterbug. One thing that uh, you can improve now that you've gotten better at pre moving, yeah. the next level is okay. that you shouldn't pre move so much. Okay. If you make like eight pre moves and then your opponent stops like pre move two, it messes. I should do two or three and kind of yes, see what happens. Yes, yes. And then. Really exactly. Okay. In fact, I, I do was, that sometimes. Yes, yes. I do. I was watching Naroditsky play 30 second chess, and that's all he does. He always makes two or three pre moves. Oh, okay. He never makes like tons and tons of pre moves. Yeah, he's definitely the one to watch. Yes, yes, definitely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Is it possible really to well. cancel pre moves? Yeah, you can go right click, I think. Yeah, yeah. Right click gets rid of all. Yes, them. yes. So I like to uh, play bishop b5 when they play knight c6 with no c5. If you don't want to do that, you should play bishop d3, because that's the better square than bishop e2. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is all normal and good. I hear something. I think it's holding it. Yeah, definitely. (laughs) So now you're a little better, because he's going to have an isolated pawn. And the bishop pair is not so important here. And the most important square is this. So I didn't really like, for example, this move because it gives up control. This is the most important square in the structure. But okay, it doesn't matter too much. These were all good moves. Like fine, you know. Oh, yeah, this is good. Maybe I would check here because then he can't block with the bishop because you take the pawn. Okay. 
I thought I saw that check earlier too. Yeah. I just was I was real worried about I wanted to get my king over and I didn't want to be on mm-hmm. the same diagonal too long. Yeah, I yeah. See already they're trying. Definitely, to definitely. I see what you mean there. It's gearing me there. But yeah, now you're just better. <clears throat> now this is a winning endgame. He gave away his bishop pair and he has all bad pawns. I know. I just didn't have time. Yeah, was yeah. No this was all good. <laughs> Then, yeah, I mean, it was just a time scramble, so obviously, you know, you hung your pawn, he hung his pawn, you hung your pawn, and you guys all hung your bishops and such, too, <laughs> like that, yeah. Yeah, this is smart. Although, generally, you don't want to put the pawn on the same color as your bishops. Like, he can't do anything here, and you already shut it down. Mm-hmm. You don't need to play b3. Um, so, yeah, you can pre-move takes and then try to get this. That's the, probably the fastest way okay. to get the pawns off the board. Yeah, I mean, you should pre-move this because you should expect him to take. I right? just was going as fast as I could. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right, and then it was uh, then throw the board <laughs> at this point. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you did a great job pre-moving there. You've gotten but way better at pre-moving. I'm patterned. Definitely. Sound not good. Okay, um, GG Jitterbug, and we're going to go ahead and end the stream because the chess club is open now. Mm-hmm. And... Um, Want to make sure that we've got time, which we do, to get ready for the tournament. Yeah. And so let's see who we can raid. Are they still, is the bot thing still going on? I hope not. I really wanted to do the bot thing. Yeah. That would seem cool, actually. It looks like it is still going on. Maybe. Oh, you could raid that guy. This guy? No, 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 no. <laughs> I meant the guy above him. But I think he's on Lee Chess. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's Lee Chess. Um... All right. Well, I have lots of people streaming. Mm-hmm. So. Will Ben stream now? He's streaming later tonight. Pretty sure. I mean, he's scheduled to at least. I don't know. Maybe I will raid him. Yeah? Might do? Yeah. Yeah, because nice. I like his stream. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm going to raid a Lee Chess guy. Um, don't I tell like, Danny. <laughs> <laughs> I like his stream a lot, and it's, um, you'll know him. He's a known player. It would be a little surprise. But, um, Super he, GM. He does need to fix his um, microphone. <clears throat> right. So he maybe, has the two turntables, but the microphone. <laughs> so maybe you guys could politely suggest. suggest it as an improvement to his stream without in, insulting him or anything. Anyway, I already suggested he wasn't sure he knew how to do it. <laughs> so anyway, thanks so much. Bye everyone. Guys. We'll Bye. see you next time. See you tomorrow I hope you probably. Enjoy the stream and everything. Take it and easy. Ben streaming at eight. So check out Ben's stream at eight. And uh, see you.